What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. We're going to start playing this crazy modern Mardu Aristocrats deck that uh, longtime supporter Sarav Demir Mastermind has submitted. And uh, yeah, basically the new additions to this are Hunted Witness and Judith, which is a pretty strong card. Um, so here's the thing. I don't know if I like Rabble Master or if I like Legion Warboss better. And let's talk about some of the differences. I feel like I've gone over this quite a bit. Because I think the two cards are very comparable. And I actually like Warboss better. Uh, the reason being that Warboss doesn't force the goblins to attack. So if you get like if you get into a situation where you're, it's not profitable to attack, you're only going to lose, say like you have three goblins out and then suddenly they make a bunch of guys. And they play like 2-2-2-2. Two, 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 and you're like, oh no. You're only going to lose the first goblin you make every turn. And you can still keep your remaining three, four, five, whatever goblins until you get like a Zulaport Cutthroat into play. Um, whereas Rabble Master forces all the goblins to attack at all times. And uh, he gets even more dangerous if you have double Rabble Master because then you're forced to attack with both of your, your Rabble Masters as well. Uh, whereas Legion Boss does Legion Warboss does not do that. Rabble Master is nice because it does pump itself. So if you attack with two other goblins, it is a 4-2. Um, but Legion Warboss is able to pump your other creatures like Blood Artist, a Doom Traveler, Haunted Witness, Lingering Souls tokens, which is great. So if you need an evasive 2-2 flyer uh, and you have a Legion Warboss out, you can just attack with the Warboss, make one of your flyers a 2-2, and then all of a sudden it's a pretty good deal. So for those reasons, I do like Warboss a little bit better than Rabble Master. Um, the only thing I think Rabble Master has going for it is the difference of pumping itself rather than pumping other, other guys and the downside of being able to... Uh, not mentor onto, or being the downside of being able to to force your other goblins to attack when they otherwise should not. Cartels? What's cartel? Cartel aristocrat? Uh, I don't think you need cartel aristocrat. You have Viscera Seer. You also have uh, Greater Gargadon as a as a sack outlet here. Uh, if Greater Gargadon was a goblin, that'd be pretty sweet because then. Um, well, yeah, I'm gonna try it with Legion War Boss instead of Rabble Master because I just think it's a better. I think it's a better goblin. I think I don't. A lot of people are saying. I feel like a lot of people think Goblin Goblin Rabble Master is better, but I just don't. I'm not really understanding it myself. What is this? Oh, this is the this is the Ravnica queue that we joined and we just didn't play it, so we can do that after. Uh, let's go to play lobby and we'll go to uh, constructed tournaments. And we'll see how this does. I don't want to actually make too many changes before before we play it. And I'm also going to update this list to Stream Decker if you guys are checking it out there. Also, you guys might be able to hear the Roomba in the background. Uh, this hand actually seems fine. We could suspend it. I think it's, we're suspending a turn one Greater Gargadon. And then we can play uh, one of these guys on turn two if we'd like. Oh, Ancestral Vision, eh? All right. I will also suspend the thing, my friend. Sarah, no worries at all. You have, you have supported me in order to do this, so I am okay with it. I appreciate your appreciation of these things. Mike B is doing the Roomba in the background. He's very loud about it as well. Oh, double Ancestral Vision. Let's see if we can kill you, even though you're playing Sultai, which is very, very nice. That's very nice. <laughs> cleaning the house <laughs> it is a hell of a dance you are correct wow another martial arts fair enough fair enough 
Oh, blah, D. Oh, blah, da. Gargadon. La, 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 greater Gargadon. With a couple of sacks. I'm just going to take a planes here so we can play this guy. With a couple of sacks so he unsuspends. It's greater Gargadon. Ha, 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 ha. Desmond on the photo in the marketplace. Was it a one two? You got it. You got it, my dude. God, they're gonna draw so many cards. It's unbelievable. Each creature with converting has X or less. Well, this is a lot of damage here. So Oh boy, this is a lot. Can we just kill them next turn? How is Babby Tarmogoy formed? Like, we can go sack both of these, rally, sack both of these. I think we're getting close. I think we're onto something here, guys. singer in a band oh wow that was a good draw holy buttered biscuits Desmond says good morning can I look your face and in the evening you've been singing with the band oh body oh blah da life goes on bro life goes on why great now you got oh they yeah great thank you for getting the song stuck in my head Thanks a lot. So there was a game where a player was playing the bridge deck on, and they kept forgetting to take suspend counters off. It's a little suspicious. I mean, think about Greater Gargan on this. As long as it has one suspend counter, you can just keep priority uh, and sack all the things you want. You don't actually have to have enough counters for the number of things you have. So as long as there's one, you're good. But still, like just being able to keep a, a sacrifice outlet suspended is pretty beneficial no joke oh you're just gonna chart a course here i'm a big fan of everything that's happening here i feel like we're we're doing well for ourselves oh boy oh boy uh let's get a godless shrine So we can go Blood Artist, Flashback Lingering Souls, 2, 4, 6, 8. Oh no, this is, oh god. Oh my god. This feels like a lot. I'm going to attack first. One, two, three, four, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Are they just dead here? Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. Yeah, they're just dead. Ha 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 ha. Desmond owns a battle in the marketplace. 
opponent Wamu Shindaru. I don't know what that. I have no idea what that means. I don't know if that's a meme. So taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. He ain't got no creatures anymore. Was this known? Is this is this known? What's known as Exaxes? Let Desmond and Marley Jones. <laughs> oh my God, Chris! What is this? Is this the meme? <laughs> <laughs> okay well we did it that deck was hard that was pretty good sorry way to go way to go do we even sideboard anything against this matchup i don't even know dread war is cool but like we have paths maybe fatal pushes are better than paths because you could actually fatal push one of your own guys if you want to to trigger a bunch of stuff I mean, it seems narrow, but I also don't want to give them lands. Yeah, I'm just going to submit like this. I can't actually see what we did. Okay, I'm back. What did I miss? Boy, what did you miss? Well, we 3 0 a Chaos Draft, so that was pretty fun. And now we're playing an Aristocrats deck. Courtesy of Sarav Demir Mastermind. Desmond and Molly Jones. Ha 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 ha. Desmond owns a battle in the marketplace. Molly is a singer in a band. Desmond sent him. Oh no, let's not cast this. I don't foresee us ever casting that. Let's keep that dude popped out. Wrench mind. Interesting choice, my, my dude. Interesting choice. Okay. Let's go this guy, go Hunty Boy, and Siri Boy. If they want to go Land Wrench Mine, they're going to be two cards ahead of us. Your creation is beautiful. You know it's beautiful, correct? Really? That is just unfortunate.
Um, as a land, I like this. I don't think we need another land. We have three lands. That's more than enough. I mean, we have a 1-1. One, one. I don't actually know how they win here. I do like a good pad tie. Although I dislike how they use fish and oyster sauce in it. So I'm like, hey, can I get no fish sauce and no oyster sauce? And they're like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, thank you. I like that. Is la porte. I'm going to kill your hunted witness in response. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Wrong blood crypt art? What's wrong with this blood crypt? Don't be a hater. Get him. A veginator? I am a veginator. I mean, I eat chicken sometimes and, and turkey, but those are like the two meats that I eat. I feel like we go over this regularly. Always yield to this. Stop not yielding to it. That's all I want you to do. Are you going to kill my hunted witness? Are you going to Vendillion click me? It's fascinating. What is a scrub? A scrub is a guy who can't get no love from me. Sitting on his sitting on the passenger side of his best friend's ride. Oftentimes trying to holler at me. I feel like you're not gonna take this, so. Did they actually... Did they... They just left it, but... Oh, that was, that was my draw for the turn. Sure. Sitting on the passenger side of his best friend's ride. Trying to holler at me. Uh, Mike is what's known as as working it's rare but it happens sure I keep f6ing I don't want f6 because we have double dark double gargadons so the sacrifice is pretty relevant Gubble dar Dargadons. That's correct. We have the double... The Gubble... Dar That's not easy to say. This one hunted witness is really going to just utterly destroy them. That's pretty obnoxious. Bro, I'm trying to rally the ancestors here. Don't you understand? I'm a people person. Sitting on the passenger side of his best friend's ride. Now I'm singing TLC. 
Well, I kind of want to wait till I have three another land to play that because then they're gonna exile and it's gonna make it's gonna make everybody feel real bad. I do like a collected company. The problem is it's a fourth color, and no one wins with a fourth color. Four colors in modern is just unbelievable. It's just hard to do, my dudes. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Is he better than all? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we have 6, 7, 8. Mm, that's not going to do it. Lingering Souls next turn does it, though. If we can Lingering Souls, we can double Gargadon here, kill Jace. But not, not quite kill their face yet. Land here is very good. That's what we wanted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We get to keep a floaty boy by doing it this way. I think we just go all in here, right? Lost Grom is a guy who can get no love from me. Open for a no maelstrom pulse. We're going both at Jace because if they end up keeping Jace, they can just bounce one of these guys. So we're just hoping if they if they have maelstrom pulse, we're pretty much dead. Yeah, it's weird. Elias only shows up when Elk Tears is also in the chat. It's very strange. It's like they coordinate their their stream viewing. Here we go. Yep, that's what we're literally hoping they had. They had to not have that. Like, whatever. It's like a one of in the deck, so I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they're playing like four, obviously. <laughs> um, take out one path, bring in a thought seize. Take out one rally, bring in a thought seize. I do feel like Argonite could probably be a three of. In addition to Viscerous here, you don't need. I don't think you need that many sack outlets, and sometimes it's just kind of dead. Yep. I mean, we're basically in a position where we're like, all right, we're going all in here on double nine sevens. That can't be fatal pushed. They can't be dismembered. So, I mean, that's a risk. It's a risk you got to take sometimes. Oh, uh, let's keep this hand. I don't think Mike B has any idea. Well, actually, Mike B was here for the Elias meme. That's that's not necessarily true. Uh, Mike made it to work today, yeah. So that's good. He's got that going for him. Well, this could be bad. It was not bad. It was actually good. I don't want no screen. 
Has Mike not been able to work? Yeah, Mike's not been able to work because he sleeps and he comes home early. And it's stressful to everyone in the house, except for Mike, I guess. <laughs> uh, good times. Yep, that is fine. Let's get a Blood Crypt here. They don't have a green source, so they'd have to have two green sources in order to get rid of this Lingering Souls next turn, so I'm okay with that. Discard a card. I will discard a Marsh Flats. And I will hit OK. They have no green sources? This could be good for us. We get to kill this Liliana. Straight up. Unfortunately, Judith does not uh, care about token creatures uh, when they die. Uh, dubs lilies. So if they just untap kill Judith, it's pretty bad. It's probably stressful for him too. Depression. Yeah, I agree with you, but I mean, yeah, I, would, I don't want to talk about this. He does not come across as someone who is bothered by it. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. I'm just going to play all the cards in my hand because I feel like it's probably better than not doing that. Uh, we're going to actually keep the, the Lingering Souls in the Graveyard. Which means we should have attacked with Shambling Vent here, but... Here we go. Yeah, that should have been... Oh, I, 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 I like the dude immensely. He's one of my best friends. I am very concerned with him. Engineer explosives for zero. It's actually not terrible for us. Judith is good because she does two things. She's a pump spell and she's a blood artist effect. Yeah, I'll just get this one. I mean, if they have fatal push in hand, it's good. But they, yeah, they crack reinforce. They fatal push this. They pop this. We take. They take three. Uh, maybe they take a lot. Okay, I'm just trying to go to the combat. I'm just trying to go to me combat step. I'm just trying to go to me combat step. Let's attack with all creatures. Yep, that's phase one. Phase two is actually activating Tarpit, blocking our tar or blocking blocking shambling vent. And then killing Judith with the No. Okay, one down. Oh, Assassin's Trophy is nice because it lets us play Lingering Souls. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I take four. And this is nice because we have a creature land and we have tokens and we have guys that make tokens if they die. And we have nothing. We have no faithless looting or anything. So we're just going to play the concealed courtyard. But it doesn't matter because we just won the game. Is it bad? I get pleasure out of watching yours and Luis's games multiple game multiple times. What? Why would that be bad? Oh, me and Luis's game at the Pro Tour, you mean? No, that was a great match. No. There is no... No, you're being ridiculous. 
I almost like Legion War Boss. I think Rally is a little too narrow to have. I think both of these can be cut down. Um, because now we have seven one mana sack outlets. Boom, boom, boom. Hmm. These are all must-haves. I'm tempted to add another Judith. Yeah, I've actually I haven't I haven't worn blazers in a while, like as a regular, uh, as a regular accoutrement. We need two cards. What did our deck do well? Let's bring in Paths, or uh, Fatal Push. I like Fatal Push better because ramping is like just not what I want to be doing in Modern. One, two, three. I think Path could still be very, very good. I just think I'd rather have the Fatal Pushes here. Are there any more Zulaport Cutthroat creatures that do the same similar, uh, same or similar thing? Why are we over here? Why, are we, why have we missed the mana base over here? Um, oh no, I wear a jacket every day in Florida. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a fashion over function kind of guy. Um, Uh, you have to go up to four CMC to get the next blood artist effect. Oh yeah, because of uh, yeah, that guy's not great at all. What about what about Spawn of Mayhem? What about that card in this deck? Is that guy good? It deals a damage every turn. I don't hate blood gas. Those are interesting. Well, I said I wear a jacket every day, not my jacket. I'm gonna be like, oh, I wear my jacket every day. That's not, that's a weird thing to say. It wasn't a flex. It was literally just a direct response to what you said. You said it's too hot in Florida for a jacket. So I'm like, man, nah, that's I just wear. Like, <laughs> I could be like, it sure is too hot. And that's the end. I don't know how else to accurately respond to what you're saying. Spawn. What does this guy cost? I might just buy them if they're like a dollar. Five tickets. Borrow it is. I'm going to bring three of these dudes in. Because it also deals the damage every turn, so it's kind of good. I'm going to borrow all four for now, just in case. We'll see how that goes. Hissing Iguana. That's actually... That is a thing. I mean, the card's $5, because it's, it's a very good card. Like, it's a three-mana dude. Let's put two in for now, see how that does. Because they're mostly going to be here. I think. Let's just see how that goes. I'm really curious how they play if we draw them or... Uh, Mardu. We got Steaming Pile of Donkey Crap still. That's nice. I will play first, and this hand is hot doo doo's mulligan. Okay, we can do this. Yeah, we'll just keep the land.
Uh, standard prices are not low for new set. Like Moto still has has uh, Moto still has high prices on new set stuff. Like yeah, I'm just gonna have six here. I don't foresee us. Uh... I mean, they can take whatever they want here. I'm not really super worried about it. Definitely a sharp edge on this one. Yep, not enjoying that. Yeah, gonna have to fix that. That hurts. Wow, they took the one guy we added, so it's like, okay. This hand is not great. My wife is enjoying the onesie meandies I got her for Valentine's. Yeah, meandies are super soft. I uh, I support your your decision to to get some meandies. Are those your dentures? Yeah, and then I take them out and my teeth are still there. They're amazing dentures. They actually leave a second set of teeth in their in their place. They're they're really high tech. They're high tech dentures. Now these are just plastic aligners that I'm wearing for uh, for teeth straightening. But like every time I put a new one in, they get really uh sometimes the edges are a little sharp. So I have to like file them down and make them uh, more amenable for my. Okay, this is where they just play. This is where they just play Death Shadow. I got a 4 4. Yep, you got it, my dude. Well, let's get a Godless Shrine. And. What other double black cards do we have? Literally just the spawn. Yeah, it looks like just spawn. So we'll get a second white source. We'll get a sacred foundry. We also have a swamp, actually, so I don't know why I even asked. Fatal Bush. Lingering Soul is not bad. <sighs> Frankless Shark. Do, 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 do. No blocks. Ooh. Heating up. That's where they fatal push this guy. Have you talked about your stance on the Nexus of Fade Banning in Arena only? I think it's stupid. I think it's a ridiculous decision. I do not think they should be segregating, have multiple standard formats with multiple ban lists. I think it's a really silly decision to make. Obviously, Fatal Push. Seems good. They're at five. I almost feel like we can take eight here as long as they don't have... And if they have Team of Battle Rage, it's whatever. Like, we're not going to be able to deal with it. Like, it gives Trample, right? Just double strike, sure, whatever. I feel like a big fan would not play Death Shadow, but you know, okay, what can you do? One hundred, Frank. There have been like four people who have asked you what your thoughts are on the Nexus of Fate ban bits. <laughs> I think it should no. Why would it be banned in all formats? I think it should be banned in standard in general. Standard, the standard format should not have Nexus of Fate legal. That's my opinion. 
I don't think it should be made in modern or legacy or anything like that. I think that's completely fine in those formats. I think it should be banned in all my all standard formats. I think it's weird to be like, it's banned in best of one only. So you have your best of one standard decks and your regular standard decks. And it's just like, wh really? I have like sub decks. Now I have like another category of deck for like a sub standard category. It just seems really weird. I'm going to be honest with you. I hate Rally the Ancestors in decks like this. I feel like you just never get a high enough concentration. Like, usually you're going to have, like, two of these guys in your graveyard and bringing them back. And it's, like, it's okay. But I feel like so many things have to go right in order to rally. I think Nexus is a really problematic card. I don't think it was a problematic card before rec before Wilderness Reclamation. Because Re Wilderness Reclamation basically lets you activate Search for Esconta twice and still float enough mana to... Um, to, to, to cast Nexus of Fate. So you're basically playing... Um, you're basically playing a deck where you can actually search. You can look nine cards deep every turn. The card you draw, the four from search, and then the four for search. So being able to look nine cards deep every single turn for one of your four Nexus of Fates is a pretty big deal. It definitely is substandard. Uh, I have no idea what's board in here. I don't think Tormont Script is great. I kind of like Dreadboard just to be able to kill their guy, but... Uh, baby Shark... I feel like it's just Dreadboard. I don't know what to take out though. Take out another rally and take out a gargles. Just take out one viscer here instead. Best one is fun if you want to play a few games to get paired against Nexus. You skew and you're gonna it cost you nothing, but it costs you the scoop. It costs you that time. Whereas if you don't get paired against Nexus because it's not in the format, you don't have to do that. So we're literally talking about a net positive versus a net neutral, right? Like. One of those situations, you do not have to, like, concede your game, queue again, hope you don't get paired against it again. Like, that's literally a cost. And the alternative is not having that happen ever, right? So, like, I, I don't understand, like, what, why you wouldn't just keep this, especially when it's a problematic card. Rampaging for Asanon is not standard legal. That is correct. I definitely don't think for Rampaging Frostedon is is reasonable in this format, no. Best of one is my favorite way to play Magic. That's said no one ever. Yeah, I don't think I, I I think this I think the health of standard is more important than the buy box program, the confidence of the, of the buy box program for one banning, and I also think I mean you're, like you're gonna lose access to a card no matter what if a card gets banned. Like that's just the bottom line. Like, I mean, I, I don't think you don't ban a card. Like, losing access to a card cannot be a barrier for banning a card because that's literally the the end result no matter what happens. So it's 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 literally sometimes you can't like you can't actually use that as a barometer for whether you ban a card or not like it's going to happen that's how bannings work right so that's a it's a it's a sunk cost you already acknowledge that that's going to have to happen if we ban any card if you've ever played against ferocidon you'd probably know why it was banned i don't mean that insultingly i mean like that that card is actually ridiculous this is where they go stubborn denial of course you do i don't think we're too quick to ban at all standard should have no bans at all sorry i disagree with you completely 
I hate to say it. I, do, I just don't. I don't think that's accurate at all. I think standard is is has been in unhealthy places, um, and the cards that were removed were were necessary to remove. You also, I mean, like you're talking about undermining the 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 the, the faith in the buy a box for the confidence in the buy a box program. But I think people are more concerned with the the confidence in standard as a format. I think that's a much bigger draw for people than the buy a box promos. Like no one, that's that's not a big deal. Like also like no one's playing no one's playing the red white card from from Ravnica from Guilds of Ravnica the red white four six like minutes are a guy that's not a standard card no one's like ups, afraid about the 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 confidence in that like no one's playing impervious great worm imperious great worm or whatever that card is called like there's already tons of of buy box promos that this is the only buy box promo that actually saw any play so like it's not really. No. Like, I don't think you could say standard should have no bans. Like, if a card is broken, if a card is negatively impacting the format and affecting attendance in standard events, like, you just need to ban a card. Like, it's not a huge deal. How much... Sarah, no, like, I, a serious question, not, not, in, not intended to be sarcastic in any way. Uh, how much standard do you play in paper? And also, like the events you play at, I, I'm almost positive are going to be a different environment than a high than a top tier meta game, like at a Grand Prix or the Pro Tour, the upcoming Pro Tour. Like, I mean, you're going to see a completely different meta game when people are just playing for fun with whatever cards they have. Uh, then, then you're going to see it like a Grand Prix where people are paying eighty dollars to play. Like, we're talking about maintaining the integrity of a of a of the highest level of competitive play, not like your local your local stores, like standard events, you know. Uh, so if we attack with this, they block here and here. They take three, four, five. And then we die on what's known as La Crackback. Yeah, like it's like it's like playing in a, it's like okay, so here's the, here's a good here's a good comparison. It's like playing in your your local modern events and you're like, I don't know why Crack Clan Ironworks is banned. No one in my store, like none of the events I go to will play play Crack, Crack Clan Ironworks. I didn't come across it a ton of magic online. The problem is when you do come across it and you will come across it more at higher level events like Grand Prix or Pro Tours. When you do come across it, it is miserable to play against. So we're actually in a position where we gotta block both of these. Both of these. They're at two. How do they aren't they just dead on board? To this guy? I mean I guess if they have a way to give this guy trample, but we already established that. Does give trample. Okay, so we actually didn't make a misplay last game. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Definitely a fun deck. Definitely a super fun deck. That's probably one of my favorite decks in modern. Just like I'm gonna play one one drop and then just kill you with it. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. I don't think there was an inherent flaw in our deck, though. I'd rather actually cut this and just play, like, another Judith.
Oh, Thraben. Um, I like Thraben Inspector as a card. I'm not sure. I don't. What, what does KK Man do over Rally though? I don't. I don't know what it does for us though. Is the problem? Like Rally is a combo piece. KK Man is just a really strong card. Like it can get back a Blood Artist, but like. If you say it's not about them, then that's not true at all. That's just a, that's just not an accurate statement. Like, it doesn't have to be about them to, for them to still be a relevant component of the whole thing, right? Like, if you have a, if you have a pie and the pie is is based on all these different factors: tournament play, local level tournament play, uh, game, you know, the fun of 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 the format, the health of the format, all these things, streamers, right? Like, just because it's not about the streamers, it's not about them. That doesn't mean they don't make up a portion of the pie. So they're still worth mentioning. Like, it doesn't make any sense that you would be like, oh, if it's not entirely about this one this one thing. Uh, then it's not worth mentioning. Like, that's just a really weird position to take. Um, Legion's Landing actually seems pretty decent. Maybe a couple rallies. I mean, we do. We have two rallies in the deck. Let's actually try Legion's Landing after this. I feel like these matches are quick. I will keep this hand. I worry about the, a deck like this where, like, when they're, like, Anger of the Gods, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> Let's go get a Blood Crypt. What up, Oral? Making a lot of noise. Oh, but it definitely is about those two streamers having a bad game once. It definitely is, because you're trying to highlight... You're trying to highlight MTG Arena as one of the flagship premier magic ways to play Magic the Gathering. And you're going to be streaming it. And you're going to be showing it off to people. And uh, doing these things, you don't want games that just get stuck where you can't actually interact for two hours. Like, it just it's a bad look. And if you don't think Wizards of the Coast took that into consideration when they made this change, um, I would say you are mistaken. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Well. Boros Charm is an also is also a good option. I like a Boros Charm. I mean we don't we're we're having a we're having a discussion in a stream. People don't need to organize their points really. Like this isn't a this isn't a, a Gordon Roll English term paper here. Like it's I think it's fine. Wow, really? MLA citation, please. It's not it doesn't it's not ineffective just because they haven't organized their points. Like I think their points are still coming across. I'm still understanding them. Yep, that's annoying. <laughs> the first rule of debate club is to cite your work. I'll take two, I guess, because this card is miserable. Watson explicitly mentioned that the banning was due to the digital experience not being able to replicate IRL factors such as looping and judge interactions. Yeah, they did mention that. Oh, Rift. Oh, you're going to light. Oh, all right. You take two, I take one. All right. Or three. Whatever. Like, how many spells do we commit here? 
I wish we had like a blood arse or something because that would be really good. Um. Yeah, MTGO has a match timer. MTGA doesn't. That's a uh, definitely a relevant point because. Uh, in Magic Online, if I'm going off and I'm taking 16 turns and I'm double searching for Iscans and I'm resolving my Wilderness Reclamation timers, triggers, that's all on my clock, right? Like, it's never on their clock. Yeah, like if I die in this mono red matchup, it's just, it's done. Penny has the zoomies. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty funny random thing to say. Oh, I'm a big fan. So, are we at a point where we can actually just pressure them enough to kill them? They have to cast two spells. Oh, holy biscuits. Um, I think we're either alive here or we're dead here. Let's find out which... going to three when they have two cards in hand like they just respond to this right and kill us it's pretty brutal bruce by the magic guy what's going on buddy long time no see um oh god do i just want to play this blood artist here no we dead we're dead if we play this right otherwise we can block and then still die That's not that's not fair. They shouldn't call it "Can you beat mono red?" Because you can also be you can also play the, against the mono blue deck as well. So they should just call it "Can you beat mono blue or mono red?" They should just call it. They it could be standard. Is it winnable? Is it winnable? And then it's that's the name of your format. Oh god! It has to be a, like what? Are they, why wouldn't they just cast it and kill us? No, they wouldn't kill us. That's why. The problem is we have to block, right? So we're just going to play this guy, and then we're going to die. It's fine. We're dead anyway. All they need is two spells anyway. Sure. Just kill us. Whatever. I'll just let it happen. Sure. You got it. I mean, they were going to do that anyway. Like, there was no way around that. Just kind of obnoxious. Where are my life gains? How come I have no life gains on the sideboard? What is this Grim Harrow Specs for? What are we doing with this guy? What is this card doing for us? What have you done for us lately, Grim Harrow Specs? Anything new or exciting? Not really. Not really. I'm a man of, uh... Man of habits? A creature of comfort? I don't know what the word I'm looking for here is. What? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying right now. I'm a creature of habit. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, this is rough. I think it's fine. Any red source and we're okay. The burn matchup has been fantastic for me, Harrowspex. Uh, I guess that's true if you get if you get like cutthroats and things. <laughs> it's for matchups with the removal, I guess. I just don't see a time where you're actually gonna just cast it for three instead of your other three drops. And where they don't just kill that instead. Like they're not gonna like, because if you, if you, like, get to, like, they're just going to kill whatever you have in response. I don't know. It doesn't seem ideal. I would like a red land off the top. Preferably our single mountain, which does not exist in the deck. Something like that. The problem with this deck is that there are so many combinations. Like, there are so many things we could change or, like, do differently. 
I feel like there might be even a better sack outlet than Greater Gargadon, and I like Greater Gargadon a lot. That's interesting. Oh. I see. Well, that that's that's pretty good against us. I worry about not having card draw. Yeah, I do too. I worry about that in every single game I play. However, however, that being the case. Yeah, this is this is a good reason to have three wear tear, but like If you don't see it in game one, I didn't really didn't think they'd board that in against us. That's pretty crazy. And this guy doesn't even die, so this guy doesn't make a 1-1 either. Wow, that's pretty bad. All of our creatures are... That's actually terrible for us. Claws of... What's there? Is there a claws? Is there a claws card? I mean, I guess we're just going to keep playing guys. I mean, there's still a burn deck, right? I don't know. I and mean, we have to draw mount we have to draw red source into Judy. Which is a little bit harder. That's brutal. Alright, well. Wow, I feel like we'd be doing really, really well here. Okay, well. Wow. I'm like blown away by rest in peace right now. The problem with Athreos is that we're sacking a lot of tokens. And like, it doesn't do anything on its own. I, we've tried Athreos in similar decks and it's just... It's unimpressive, unfortunately. All right, now we're talking. Ugh, I hate I hate taking this damage. I really want one. God, going to eight is rough because now we're at like virtual three burn spells instead of two. Let's go into that combat step. All right. Get a goblin. Get a schmoblin. I'm not sure there's a regular match timer like MTGO. Just don't display it until you're at five minutes. The problem with not displaying it until you have five minutes is that, like, you could monopolize your time unintentionally. Oh, they're just going to go, watch, they're just going to go Boros Charm, Boros Charm. Sure. Oh, uh, here we go. Here comes a good game in the chat. Ready? And then you get to, like, the, the, the game three or even game two, and you're, like, five minutes left, and you're, like, oh, wow, I haven't, this is, there's no way I can win this now because I was not aware of the... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have like all the damage on board. I mean, if you're gonna searing blaze. Yep, yeah, we're definitely sacking this guy. Bottom. Okay. Going to one. They are not dead anymore. Well, that is unfortunate. Yep. Fatal pushes when they have literal no creatures anymore. Okay. So 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There would be 8 if they didn't have rest in peace in play. <sighs> so brutal, dude. Bringing rest in peace against this matchup. Utterly insane. It's very good. Just feels bad. What are the odds they have a, a spell in their three card hand that deals us one? Pretty low, right? It's got to be basically zero. We are 1-2, I think, now. That's unfortunate. Hope you had a decent Valentine's Day. Uh, Valentine's Day was pretty non-existent, so. Wow, you did. You had a skull crack. That's impressive. So basically, all you did was play spells that, that targeted my face, and and then that was it. That's impressive. That's very impressive. What a, 
What a skill intensive deck. <laughs> That's so it's so mindless, dude. Uh let's take out the Grim Harrow Spexes. I actually like timely reinforcements for the sideboard. The thing about periodic updates at a local game store is that at the local game store you actually can still look at the clock or ask how much time is left. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you're not able to do that... Eighty turns is also like a lot. Like that's not going to change. Like if the problem is like a Nix is a fate deck, which is like the only real problem with the time system in Magic Online, like or Magic Arena, like MTG Arena. That's the only problem is the the turn system, or the only the only problem is like literally that specific matchup, right? So like, I mean, eighty turn limit is not going to really solve the problem. You're just solving a problem that doesn't exist. It's your boy Tom. Congrats, buddy. Way to go. Way to go, my dude. Are there... Give me a better sacrifice outlet. What was the other one? What did you say? Uh... Yeheni is interesting. Claws of Gix. Is Claws of Gix legal? Oh, it was Time Spiral. That's interesting. The problem is it's one mana, though. Like, you want your sack outlets to be free. Whereas, like, Viscera Seer and Greater Gargadon are both free. Is there any two mana sack outlets? I don't really want a three mana sack outlet. Hmm. Cartellarist. Actually, there's also the new one too. Cartel Aristocrat, does it cost mana to sacrifice? No. I actually like Cartel Aristocrat a lot. We can take out... Let's take out the Gargadons and we'll add three Cartel Aristocrats. It's also another two-drop for your rally, so you can actually bring back... This is nice because you can go... Uh, oh, it's extra less, though. It's also going to bring back these. I like this a lot better, actually, because it not only gives your guy protection, but it gives you a way to sacrifice all these things. This is actually nice. It also lets you attack for two. Uh, like, Hidden Stockpile is good, but again, it costs mana. Right? Like... Actually, it's not bad though. It might be a better. It might be a, a better. What is return to the ranks? I know I always get these two cards confused. Actually, return X target creatures with converting. No, I like I, rallies better because it gets all of your creatures back. Um, Gargadon is something I can't interact with, but I, I think it's also something that doesn't do anything on the board, right? And I think that's a more, like they're not they're already unable to interact with. If they have something to interact with and they can't interact with the Gargadon, they're going to interact with something else. They're going to kill your Zulu or your Blood Artist. You know, like, if they're able to interact, they're going to. And at least Cartel Aristocrat, if they try to interact with it, you can just give it protection. Right? So, I mean, I, I think you're you're undervaluing the fact that this is a creature on the board that actually has an impact immediately. Which I think is more relevant because it's also like, I mean... Gargadon just kind of sits there. It's like it's like if you, it, a lot of times Gargadon is going to be a, a zero mana card in your hand or a one red card that says, if this is in your opening hand, remove it from the game. You now have a sack outlet for the rest of the game. But it's like it's it's not doing anything for you actively. If that makes sense. Here's a question: Was the shuffle on Nexus meant to be a bonus or a draw? I we I have no idea. I'm not sure anyone would really know, unless it was like discussed somewhere <sighs> playing Larry Boo this hand is no point how many lands do we have Sarah 22 should be decent I don't think we can keep this hand Oh, this is worse, but I don't want to go to two, and we get to scry. Okay. 
See, now we have Cartel Aristocrat into spawn, which is nice. Oh, we're on the draw. This is good. You may begin with the creature tokens get plus one, plus one. Sure. You've piqued my interest. Creature tokens. Okay, so there's playing like black white tokens with the. Uh... Land next turn would be great because it turns on all these three drops. Cartiller. Isn't there a two-man vampire that sacks? Or am I thinking of you, Henny? Uh, I mean, there's a two-man human that sacks, which is pretty much the same, right? They're going to take one and play Spectral Procession. Makes three, three, threes. That's going to be hard to deal with. Yep. And no third mana. Okay. Yeah, the problem is you want free sack outlets because you when you go off, you don't want to be like, well, I can activate this twice and deal you two. And Vigilance too. Okay, so we're definitely bringing in all the wear tears here. That is a ley line of the meek, yes. I'm a big fan. I will take nine here because I have no flying blockers. <laughs> Our opponent's playing, they're playing 4D chess over here. We're playing checkers. Oh, look, two more three threes. Totally reasonable thing to do. It's actually fine. We give pro white. And we hope to hit a land, right? What problem is? There's nothing we can do. They have 15 power on board. Like, it's not a reasonable amount of power on board. Even if we draw, like, Spawn of Mayhem, I actually don't know why we're still playing this out. Bloodthorn Vampire, actually, that's pretty good. Is that just better than Cartel Aristocrat? I don't think so. I think the protection is probably better. All right, take out the rallies. Bring in the bring in triple wear tear and all the thought seizes. Fatal push seems pretty rough. And we can take out probably one hunted witness. Goblin Barbara 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 will be gas. It's not legal. It wasn't like reprinted in any kind of like ridiculous set. Raid Bombard, whenever a creature you control with power two or less attacks, it deals one damage. It also costs three, which is significantly worse. Yeah, Goblin Bombardment in Modern would, like, I think it would fundamentally change certain, like, it would change the format in the sense that they would definitely add a s solid archetype. What is with these one land hands, man? This is brutal. This is good. Which Tesa? Four mana Tesa? Keep. Um yeah, you know, I'll keep that too. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get too greedy. I like hidden stockpile. The problem is we just need to find space for it. Like, yeah, 
isn't Tesa Karlov like what's the, what's the three mana one? I mean, those are two totally different cards, right? Which one do you have in mind? Sacrifice three white creatures, remove target creature from the game. That's never going to happen. Whenever another black creature controls, put into a graveyard from the play, put a 1 1. Actually, both of them could be decent. Uh, I want to start with Cartel Aristocrat first. Yeah, I think the new one's good. I just worry about because it, it triggers all the all the dying effects. The problem is that like she's four mana. You could probably play two. I think you either play that or you play rally. I think they're both fulfilling like a similar like kind of engine role. She does give tokens lifelink. That's true. That is a true statement. Here comes an intangible. Rest in peace again. <sighs> These people, man. You people with your rest in pieces, man. Triplicate, spectral, and tangible. Yeah, get rid of that spectral. I mean, it's almost better to play Hunted Witness here because Blood Arse doesn't do anything, so... I'll get a Blood Crypt. I'll say no, and I'll play 1-1. One, one. And we'll hope for, like, Wear Tear off the top. God, this card is just unbeatable for us. It's really bad. Yep. So you played that and you played a planes. So done done. Question is if they path, do we just let them path and get the land? Or do we keep our thing about Blood Artist is that even if it's not a great death thing, it's nice to be able to just sacrifice the 0-1 to save the Cartel Aristocrat. I'm pretty sure they just top decked a path. Yep, here we go. Really, Viscerous here. Yeah, I think I'm just more interested in scrying here. And getting a free land. Yep, bottom. What is the sack outlet needed for? Literally the card that's on board, Blood Arst. And Zulaport Cutthroat. So they played Swamp. So we only have Triplicate Spirits and Godless Shrine and presumably not a Spectral Procession. It's probably just another Intangible Virtue here. That would be my guess.
One, two, three. Shambling Vento. They just didn't play anything? That's interesting, because you know there are other two cards. So if it was a removal spell... Well, you guys, you can stay home. Yeah, I like Legion's Landing, actually. That was the card we mentioned. Legion's Landing seems pretty good. Raise the alarm. Okay, well, sure. Nice tutus. Uh, sure. Oh, man. Can we talk about how good Wear Tear would be right now? I mean, they're going to just play Triple Get Spirits, and we're probably dead here. I hate the three mana Johnny. I think that Johnny, no offense, sucks ass. Yeah, so looking at three mana Johnny, like, none of the abilities are that great, right? Um, putting a 1 1 counter on one creature doesn't do anything, and giving a creature flying and double strike doesn't do anything in our deck. I mean, Johnny, the four mana Johnny is much better because you can return. It's basically like, it's basically a better rally the ranks, right? Rally, rally the troops, whatever that card is. And putting a 1 1 counter on like two of our guys, actually, a Johnny seems pretty good. Yep. This is really hard to deal with. I'm getting really sad. Yeah, I think we're just at a point where we're like, we. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so we just take block one of these guys, sack the. I guess we block two. Sack to save. Yeah, this is really hard to deal with. It must be nice. God, I wonder what that's like. We actually had a decent block. Like, we can go activate this guy, block here, block here, sack this guy. Kill one of these guys, we take four gain two, we actually take two. Now we just take 7,000 and it's basically impossible to actually win this game. Seems good. Yeah, we're just going to go to the next game. We take nine here, it's just not reasonable. So what happens if we draw? Godless Shrine and two Thoughtseize. All right. All right. So we definitely need to make some changes here. I, I think this card is way too slow. Um, I just don't like Rally. I don't think it's doing us any favors. I do like the Ajani suggestion. God, everyone has these ridiculous... Do I even have that Ajani? Do I have to borrow that Ajani too? My god. What is it called? Tyrants? I don't have that Ajani. Yeah, we'll put that Ajani in here. Oh, we don't want to pay to sacrifice, and there's also a four mana sacrifice outlet, which is just way too expensive. Wow, a Johnny costs three, and Judith costs, or a uh, spawn of spawn of what's his name costs five. That's insane. Okay, so put two of this guy in here. I think everything else is fine. Like I almost feel like we want thought seizes because they're just. So I think Thoughtseize is more relevant than Fatal Push. There aren't creatures that we're, like, super concerned with killing. Meanwhile, Judith is also legendary. I don't know if we want three Judiths. I don't actually like three Judiths in the deck. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to put three Inquisition in the main. I think it's just too relevant. Like, I think we're just losing less if we don't actually have that many in here. Take out one of you and take out one fatal push. I 
Uh, the problem is also we're running 22 lands, so I don't want to load up on three and four drops when we have 22 lands in the deck. I and mean, sometimes, we've, you, as you've noticed, we haven't actually hit our third land a significant number of times. I am a victory condition. What does that even mean? Let's see, here we go. Mentor, Intruder Alarm, and Elvish Visionary. Wow, okay. And you have Beck and Call? Pretty sure intruder alarm is the combo piece there. Okay, so you don't have those, you don't have visionary. These are your three cards and whatever you drew for the turn. Hmm. Let's just play Goblet Shrine here. This will report cutthroat. Mentor. Okay, so you have Glacial and Beck and Call still. Good to know. All right, so seems good. Next turn we can play both of these. All right, all right. One, two, three, four. Mentor draw card, sure. Seems good. Can we just kill this guy? It seems very strong to just double block this guy. Problem is we can't activate our spawn if we do that. We could block with the Cutthroat Spirit. That doesn't seem good though. I'll just take two here. Hmm. So we're gonna go Blood Crypt. Yes, black, black. White, spawn the spectacle, and doomy boy. All right, that seems good. I like the Unraveler of Secrets. I think that was a good that was a good Jace. Boom, 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 ba -do -ba -do. Double Blood Artist, huh? Hmm. Well, we have no Sacrifice Outlet here, which is unfortunate. God, can you, Cartel Aristocrat would be OP right here, right? So let's just go double blood artist, I guess. And they're at five. Blood artist lingering souls is probably a little more reliable. In case they do, if they crater hoof, we're dead, right? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they just go land crater hoof. <laughs> okay, well, that came into play tapped. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's good. Two, 
two. Do they make birds? One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, draw a card. Sure, okay. This is where you go infinite. Village bell ringer, untap your guys, draw a card. Okay, well they stacked it in a way that like they don't get to tap their guys to draw the card. They're not drawing the card anyway, okay. Yeah, if only we had a sack out is right. I agree with you. We got seven in the deck. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I kind of like the I kind of like the wear tears here. I'm gonna take out the Ajani's because they don't seem like they're gonna be killing our guys. Um, can probably take out Hunted Witness. Bring in like a Thoughtseize and another Fatal Push, I think. Yeah, this hand seems keepable. Boom, 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 boom. So we do have an answer for a intruder alarm, which is nice. Part of the reason you went to three Gargi boys is they don't do much in multiples. Cartel is at least a bear, so it might not be the worst to consider an eighth. I was actually thinking that as well. I was thinking fourth, the four Cartel Aristocrat seems pretty good. It might be better than the fifth and sixth. I might, like, I could see finding room for the fifth and sixth, like, Doomage Traveler-esque creatures. They have no blue. So I think I'm feeling okay about just playing Cutthroat here. And we'll get in for one. I'm fine with it. Okay. Seems good, but no no mana to draw from that guy. Okay. That's nice because it gets us a red source. Let's get a Sacred Foundry because we already have a basic swamp. All right, next time we can play Legion War Boss and keep up Tear because I'm really kind of afraid of Intruder Alarm, but they don't have a blue source yet, which is interesting. Oh my god, Torgar might be insane. What if we played one Torgar to just like... Oh, the problem is like... The problem is it's it's when it enters the battlefield, right? So all the sacrifice triggers would go on top. And if you don't kill them, they just go back to one. And you're like, eh, that sucks. Or they would go back to ten, rather. <laughs> <coughs> Not one. Ten. One, two, three... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this could be a crater hoof turn. That's pretty pretty rough if it is. I guess we could target ourselves. But we're probably gonna be gaining a bunch of life from the sack triggers anyway. I like the idea. I like where your head's at. One, two. For an elf and a card, okay. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're way away from Crater Huff Behemoth here, so that's good. We also don't have any blue mana. What's going on right now? I am very confused. All right, this card is, this Village Bell Ringer is a little scary. Now you have one, two, three, four, five, still five. I mean, we're already way dead if they have Crater Huff or some, some, some monstrosity. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm so sad. <laughs> I got the wrong land. Oh, they probably have a handful of intruder alarms. Uh, 
Oh, man. Yeah, that's brutal. I mean, they have time for sure. Unfortunately, Legion War Boss doesn't really do much here. And we can play this untapped, double lingering souls. Remember that one time that guy mis mis misclicked against us in cube? And, uh... Ended up getting... Oh, yeah, I forgot to... And then they kept an Emrakul in their deck. I'm actually going to do one and one here. We'll play Cutthroat. Having multiple Cutthroats on board seems good. Okay. I mean, they, they're going to have... They're going to have an answer eventually, my dudes. Where are these blue sources at? I remember. <laughs> They're like, oh, it was just a misclick. Totally misclick. And you're like, wow, that misclick won you the game. And it only works if you know we have this card in hand. That's crazy. Oh, time spar with Leovold in play was insane. Okay, so you're playing a bird here. Draw like four cards per guy. Yep, this is a lot of things. Wow, man. Can we get a... Uh, can we get a uh, sack outlet here? Just one time? Just win the game on the spot? One time. That's not it. Yeah, I feel like another Cartel Aristocrat is definitely where we want to be. All right. Well, this is it. Yeah, just freaking crater huff us. Oh God, what happens? What what even is happening right now? Okay. I mean, they could have more than one. Yeah, this guy wasn't able to get in there, so they would just go block here, block here. No, I think they would have been dead. I think they would have been dead because these double trigger, right? So if they block here, they take four, not two. I think you, yeah, I think we might have been, I think you might be right there. That was a that was a misplay, and essentially we, we should have won this game. I think. No, no, no. They could just take it all. They could just take it all, and they would go to one. However, we could have played War Boss and attacked with everybody. Yep, that would have done it. All right. So yeah, we'd be definitely like. There's a lot of options in this in this deck. There are a lot of things to do. Oh God. Yep. I don't have two. I'm pretty sure I've mentally checked out now. I mean, it's possible they just whiff, right? They only have 11 cards. 
Oh, I don't know what you're doing, so I'm not, I'm not going to concede because I have no idea what their win condition is. Oh, Goblin Bombardment would be, actually be amazing if only that was a legal modern card, my friend. <laughs> yeah, see, money we've already discussed it. It's not legal and modern. It would be utterly insane. It would be the go-to uh, aristocrat. Oh, what in the hell is this? What is this? There's no better option than this? <laughs> there has to be a better option than this. Oh, I guess you're just playing multiples. All right, well, I'm just going to let them attack, so. Oof. What is even happening right now? I don't know. Ethereal Guidance? What in the earth, man? There's got to be a better card than this, right? Is this the best? I mean, I don't know. I'm not in the market for plus plus X plus X where X where plus X plus Y where X is higher than Y. I'm not really in the market for those cards, so I don't know. Truly, they are styling upon the. It also overrun gives trample, and Thrill Guidance does not. Oh my God! Like you have this. What is this weird combination of cards in your deck? It's very strange. Okay, well, I have an X. I, I don't know why I have an F6 yet, so I'm just going to F6 here and. I hope they just draw their. I hope they. I hope they draw their deck. It's all May abilities, so they're not going to do that, but. Uh-huh. 1, 2, 3, 4. F we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Only two of these get through? Oh, wow. I don't think we're dead. This is pretty hilarious. So what, we're taking 6 and, yeah, we're just taking 12 here. Wow. <laughs> Got him. Wow. How did, we, how did we not die there? Where is the crater hoof, my dude? Where is the crater hoof? I said GG's. I don't think it's sent. I'm going to make sure it sends. Oh, man. Wow. Man, you, you see, this wouldn't be a problem if you had Overrun. What now? What now? I do like a fourth aristocrat. I think it's probably better than a hunt a fifth, a sixth one drop guy. I think these are these are pretty much pivotal for the deck. I actually don't like the war boss. <clears throat> Is that weird? Tithe taker? I don't hate Tithe Taker. Um. Oh wow, heroic reinforcement seems interesting. The problem is we're not a token deck. Like, don't get it confused. We're not making a bunch of tokens. Our only tokens are lingering souls, really. I almost like like raise the alarm over Legion War Boss.
Hmm. Like war, like even Rebel Master slash Warboss, I just don't think it's I just don't think it is a good fit here. I just think it's kind of like it's cool he makes tokens, but the problem is those tokens are like very easy to chump block. New Angel instead of what's the new Angel? And also a Johnny was a, a new addition that we just added because I think it's a great. We also like we just added a Johnny last round, so like why would we take him out right now without ever having played him for like a new card that we haven't also tested? I think new Johnny's. I think a Johnny's great. Like it, it returns any of these infinite number of creatures. One, two, three, four, five. So this is what. Uh, so nine plus twelve, twenty three creatures. Twenty one creatures rather. No, 23. 23 is right, yeah. Oh, I do like Mog War Marshal, actually. Or Krenko. No, there's no Krenko guy, right? Yeah, it's Krenko's command, which is raise the alarm. I actually do kind of like that. The problem is, like... I guess there's no problem, right? Like, even if you sack it without a guy... I would like to add more red sources, though. Let's take out one planes and add just another, like... Hmm. Just add, like, another blood crypt, I guess? Why not run Mentor? Because we just don't have the mana. We have 22 lands. So, like, you're never going to be able to, like, go three drop Mentor, four drop, play, like, a two drop, draw one card. Like, it's just, it's kind of slow. Like, most of the turns we're tapping out unless we're, like, stalled. I mean, I don't hate Mentor as a card. I just don't think it's doing... I'm tempted to just run another spawn of Mayhem as well. This is just a big fat idiot for three mana. Let's try one taste of one of Johnny. I think that's actually pretty sweet. All right, I'm gonna do one more and we'll see how it goes. This is gonna be like round f six. One, two. I think we're actually two, two, so this would be round five, right? Makeshift munitions, yeah, definitely. Uh... Yeah, the one mana is the way, is really the key component there. Uh, this actually seems really good. We got three drop, four drop, two drop, three drop, four drop. I'm okay with this. Do you have a Vault of the Archangel? No, because your your colored sources are too restrictive, I think. I do love... I, I, you guys know I love Vault of the Archangel, but like I think there's very few turns where you're like... You're trying to maximize on like three mana with this deck because you have 22 lands. What's up, a Fuel Saying? Yep, your favorite and mine. Well, I'm just going to kill this idiot.
Actually, one carry Zev could be good as a 1-3. I like that. Yeah, because she's a 2-drop. If she was a 3-drop, I'd be off it. But being a 2-drop is nice. And you can just play one of as a legendary. And I think that's kind of cool. Wow, this is really sad. Yep. God, I hate the red decks in Modern. I lose to them so frequently, I'm like, why don't I just play this deck? Joke's on you. You're taking a bunch of damage. Yeah, we, we already went over this. Athreos is just not good. It just doesn't do anything. It doesn't trigger with tokens. And, like, if they kill one of your creatures, like, sure, get it back. You don't have the mana to cast it again. Like, if I tap out on turn three to play Athreos with nothing on board, well, you're just dead in modern. And then on turn four, you're going to be like, all right, I'll block with my Cartel Aristocrat. And they're like, okay, you can have it back. And I'm like, all right, I'll just replay it. It just doesn't do anything. Oh, wow, we just get to trade for this? Oh, that's brutal. And I say this as someone who really likes Athreos as a card. Let's just get a basic swamp because I don't want to die. Let's keep lingering. And let's go Cartel Aristocrat. And next turn with Double Blood Artist and Cartel Aristocrat, I feel like we should be okay if we can survive this one single turn. What deck is this? It's just Martyr Aristocrats. Thank you. Dragosi, welcome back, buddy. We almost have a stream. A stream, baby. What are we naming him or her? Uh, let's give it two more months and we'll see how it... Okay, that's one down. You have one other card? All right, this is actually great for us. And you're going to play it right now. Why do we have to play a Johnny first? I don't want to die against a red deck. Okay, this is actually great. That was the best they could have done. Red. Yeah, now we can have six because they have no cards in hand. Yeah, that game just ended. We just ended the game. Oh, Johnny doesn't even do anything on this board. You're crazy. You're a maniac. I'm sorry, you're attacking? Okay, yeah, don't do that. I advise against it. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. But pro red... <laughs> This is why you play Cartel Aristocrat, because they're just like, yeah, what? I don't know what that card does. I'll just attack into it. I'll try to kill it with a, a Skewer of the Critics, and then I'll just attack into Thank it. Thank you. So the thing about um, Penumbra with the sub, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. The thing about seeing if a Johnny's good here is it's not going to do that. We're not going to see if he's good just by this specific situation. I mean, next turn we can go uh, sack Blood Artist, play Blood Artist, get Blood Artist back, play a Johnny. And, you know, not in that order specifically, but... Oof. A bump in the night and a searing blaze. Why would you tap both of your blood grips instead of your 
Oh, beautiful. I love it. I love it. This has not been, uh, this has not been an exercise. This has not been good. Let's get a godless shrine, a shrine without God. That's the game. <laughs> That'll do. Judith. Judith. Oh wait, I'm super dead. <laughs> it's possible, it's possible. Oh man. All right, so we could have attacked for three, put them in nine. Sack this, put them to seven. Sack this, put them to five. Sack this, put them to one. Rock and roll ain't noise pollution. All right, let's take out, we're bringing in uh, timely reinforcements, faux show. We'll take out the taste. Actually, taste is good because of the lifelink. Take out the Ajani and one of the spawns. I also don't hate this as a way to kill um, Eidolon, but we can just bring in the other fatal push and we'll take out the other spawn. Why not play the artist in your hand before you, because it doesn't matter because they're dead. They have no cards in hand and we're gonna kill them because it's just literally a technicality. Thank you. Because that's just a still, it's just a had all these moment where you're just like, oh, good. K dead lol, thank you, K, K dead all. Thank you so much for the, re for the sub, really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. I will keep this hand. Here comes old Guido. Old Goblin Guidario. Um... If we play this, they could have Searing Blaze. We still get a blocker. We take three. I also don't want to risk like having a second creature out or having a creature out. Um, I think we're just playing Inquisition here. Thank you. Because it also lets us play either of these next turn. So. Wrigley, thank you so much for this for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Uh, kind of want to get rid of Skullcrack here. Searing Blood is scary, but we can kind of deal with it. I also have one other land. Skullcrack prevents our untimely ti entire timely from uh, functioning. So, rock and roll noise pollution. Why is this song stuck in my head? I don't know. Someone probably mentioned it. Okay, so you played Bloodstain and you played Monastery Swiftio. 
I hate having to to take two from a fetch though, or from a shock land in order to actually cast. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. We could get a basic here, which be, which would be fine. We can play Doom Traveler and a Fatal Push. Wow, that is aggressive. What are the two cards? Oh, a Lightning Bolt and a Searing Blaze. Well, Bolt is good. Blaze, not so much. We're definitely not playing Doom Traveler now. Scourge Diva. We're going to play this and not use it. We're going to try to negate this Searing Blaze, so they're just going to have like Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's actually a lot of damage, but we're going to gain 6. Presumably, we're going to hit a land here because it's very nice of them. Uh, no blocks. I'm hoping that they just lightning bolt twice to get the triggers off this and then we can kill this. That would be our, our ideal scenario. Because I don't think they have anything else, really. Like, I think they have to acknowledge that they're not going to do anything else, but, like, Really? Whatever. We take one less if we wait. We take two less. Or we take we take one less if we Anyway, you know what I'm saying. They're gonna lightning bolt. Sure. We saw this coming, so it's whatever. They chose to pass. If we take three, then we're taking one, two, three, four, six. We take six more if we wait. Does that make sense? You guys know what I'm saying? This is a really weird situation. I'm trying to think of how I can best word this. They pass, so they were comfortable letting us take three. And then they have six damage of burn in hand, so we would have taken nine total. Okay. If we kill the goblin guide, we're still taking nine total. But we're forcing them to use the lightning bolts. If we killed this, we take eight total. I don't know. Does it matter? I don't know. They're tapped out. We get to timely here, so we'll get a swamp. We know they have a searing blood in hand. Oh, searing blood is not searing blaze, which is nice. So maybe we actually play Doom Traveler and no, we're at three. That's not an option. I'm like, that's not an option. But we, we do have like four things we can play. We can play this and this next turn, which is pretty nice. All right, well. I'm just going to... Do we just triple block here? No, because if we triple block, they get rid of one. <sighs> yeah, we'll just block with one. I think that's fine. Timely just helps you win games you shouldn't be able to win. I mean, it's not... That's nah, actually... That's interesting. I think it's actually safe to go to 8 here. So we want to play Aristocrat first, then we want to play Blood Artist. I think. Um, reason being, we want to be able to sack the Blood Artist if they target it. And we do have protection already up, so I'm pretty okay with this. We want a black Blood Artiste. If they try to Searing Blood, we actually don't take the damage if the creature doesn't die. So now every creature on board is sackable, so to speak. I'm just going to get in there with one.
feeling pretty comfortable pretty comfortable with a blood artist out also judith being able to deal damage to any target not just to the opponent is pretty strong What does micromodal mean? Uh, it's a... Yeah, we're just going to block with this. Should have blocked with soldier too, maybe? I don't know. But the problem is if they kill the soldier, then we actually... We're going to sack it anyway, so... I feel like they're going to searing blood here. Lightning bolt our face. Okay. I will allow it. Red. Yeah, Mog War Marshal with a Cartel Aristocrat and a Blood Artist. And, a, and a, oh, actually playing both of these next turn is just insane. Can we win here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're at four. We don't die. And it's definitely just Judith here. And we figure out what happens after that. They're at nine. Can we deal that? Can we can we deal with that amount of life? No, we definitely want to take damage there. We can just play Doom Traveler here, and then we have. Hmm. So if we sack this, it deals two. Sack this, it deals one. Sack this, it deals one. That's four damage. Sack Judith, it deals two. That's six damage. Sack Blood Artist, it deals one. That's seven damage. This would have only made one more extra token. So it would have been one more damage, not two. All right. <clears throat> I think that's fine. We have a lot of sack. We, we, can, we can sack like one, two, three. We can sack four things and go up to ten here. And their mana is really restricted, so... The only problem is if they target the Blood Artist, it's pretty bad. But well, we wouldn't be dead. We would have to figure out how much we're sacking, though. I think we're just, I think we're just winning the game. That's what they did. So we're going to sacrifice you. And we're going to try to gain some life here. No easy to the Judy. Sack this guy, because the damage here is just a little bit... I'd rather have the life than the damage, so. And then we are going to sack the Blood Artist to itself. Oh, go red. Oh, uh, red again. Oh, <clears throat> uh, red again. So much pro red. Yeah, so now we're at nine. They don't really have profitable blocks here. We can sack the spirit to make this lethal, and the Mog War Marshal also just kills them, so. No blocks. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll just play Mog War Marshal, and we'll use that to give pro red. We have four Viscera Sears in the deck. Come on, get it together, Sea Money. Get it together, buddy. Get it together, my dude. Good game. Not going to send it until they send it, but I, I feel like they will. They seemed like a, a good sport. Not one to preemptive GG.
And there it is. All right. All right. I play verse with Crack the Earth and Bloodgast. I like Bloodgast. I think Bloodgast is fine. The problem is, like, our creatures aren't attacking a ton. You know what I mean? Like, our 1-1s one are usually not getting through. We're just trying to sacrifice them or fuel, like, Cartel Aristocrat. I think this version is actually pretty sweet. I kind of like these two fun ofs. I also do like a carry Zev. I think carry Zev is pretty reasonable, especially with Menace. Um, I think this is good. I like this configuration. I would even consider putting another Timely in just because of the... I would add another Timely, take out one of the Tormod Scripts. I'm not a big Tormod Crypt fan. I would even consider playing Relic over Tormod Script, but I mean, it's hit or miss. Like, if you like one over the other, it's fine. Um, but I think this I think this version's pretty sweet. I like these spawns at three. I think these are fine four drops. Both of them trigger a bunch of things. Um, and with like 10 cards that have, uh, actually like 15 cards that have leave the battlefield triggers. That's pretty decent. She could be pretty good. Um, I think this is pretty sweet. I, I like this deck and uh, we went three, two. So I think that's pretty good. And it was hard to configure because there are a lot of options for this deck. I do think you want something like Inquisition in the deck because it's really hard to... Um, I don't like Alesha because, again, she's very mana intensive, right? Like, you have to pay two mana. And a lot of times you're just not going to be able to attack with her. That's the thing. Like, if they have a 3-4 Tarmogoyf, like, you're just not getting... You're not going to do anything. I don't think she's great. Like, there's a lot of creatures in Modern that just straight up block her. And uh, you also have to have one of these creatures in play. Does she put it into play attacking? Yeah, and also, it also comes into play tapped and attacking. So, like, you're not going to want to bring back a Blood Artist tapped and attacking, or, like, a Zulaport Cutthroat tapped and attacking. Like, yeah, not really what we're looking for, unfortunately. Um, but, other, other than that, I think this deck was pretty sweet, and I really enjoyed playing it, so... That's a good That's a good feel. That's a good feel when you get to the end and you're like, that was all right. That was all right. Sarah, thank you so much for the opportunity to play this. I really appreciate this. I hope you got some good ideas, and I hope that this... Uh, I hope this list is something that uh, you appreciate. And uh, if you guys ever want to have your deck decks critiqued by me, definitely check out my, my Patreon page or my Twitch profile. The links are in the description below. You can also check out meundies.com slash Frank Lepore, and you'll get 15% off along with free shipping and free returns. That link is also in the description below, and that is a great way to help the stream and also get something back like... Uh, a physical product back that you're going to buy anyway. So really appreciate it. You guys have been great. Slam those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you next time.